There's a vast amount of characters in the game and trying to learn each and everything about each character can take an extremely long time. That being said, in this video, we're gonna be going over one tip for each and every support and tank so that you can learn something about these characters and take it directly into your game so you could start winning more and more instantly. All that being said, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, kicking it off with the first character on the list, we have D.Va. So with D.Va, this tip is pretty simple, but let me really explain the implications behind it. You wanna be using your DM to eat every Fire Strike, Mora Orb, Dynamite, all these really powerful abilities you can eat and neutralize with your Defense Matrix. Now, this is really important to do because it will essentially trade resources favorably for your team and allow you to have better and faster ultimates overall. Think about your Ryan. If your Ryan is getting giant fire strikes and you're eating all the enemy's fire strikes, your Ryan is going to get earth shatter maybe double as fast, which could actually transition to more fights won. You do this on a large scale, really keeping track of enemy abilities and shutting them down with defense matrix. That could be a way that you instantly start winning more games on D.Va. Now moving on to character number two, let's talk about Ana. So what you want to do is play in a way that utilizes Ana's strength. You can play from a distance healing your allies. You don't necessarily have to be contesting point when your team is pushing up to contest objectives. You could be playing from a safe positioning off the point. All the while, you could be looking for opportunities to find value nades and momentum nanos. Adjust your positioning to accommodate to enemies that can dive you, plus your confidence in your mechanics. Maybe you need to be playing more with your team if there's multiple enemies that can dive you, but if there's only one and you're confident you can hit the sleep dart, you might be able to play far away and utilize that distance that Ana really brings to the table, the fact that she can heal from long ranges. Now moving on to the third character on our list, we have Reinhardt. So something that you need to really think about is try to never get your Fire Strike reflected or eaten by D.Va. This can really neutralize a lot of your effectiveness and how you build ult charge. That can also be used as a liability if the Genji reflects into your whole team. That could be one of the best ways he gets Dragon Blades really fast. Also really try to find ways to get tricky with your Fire Strikes. Peeking out from behind natural cover and Fire Striking in a really narrow passageway right along the wall could be a way that you get giant Fire Strikes. More consistent Fire Strikes means more Earth Shadows over the course of the game. If you you really want to see an in-depth Ryan Shatter VOD review, smash that like button and let me know in the comments down below. I can do an in-depth VOD review that shows you some of the thought process that go behind when and where to Earth Shatter on Ryan. So definitely let me know if that's something you want. Now moving on to character number four, we have Lucio. So I made a couple Genji guides in the past talking about the duality of Genji. You know, the poke and prod versus the brawl style of Genji. The going in versus the looking for opportunity style Genji that's doing regular amounts of damage and regular amounts of pressure. Now, I would say that there's a duality of Lucio as well. He has a sort of duality much in the same way that Genji is, but it's a little bit different. There's a peel oriented style of Lucio made to help allies heal them up or get divers off your teammates. And then there's an aggressive play style Lucio, a playmaking Lucio. Both are important styles for climbing and ranked, but I find that many Lucios don't alternate between them. The best Lucio could swap between both playstyles when needed. Sometimes you need to peel for your McCree or your Ana that's constantly getting doed by multiple enemies, and your peel could bring so much value to the table. But there are many other times where trying to contest a Hanzo and dueling him on the high ground or closing off the off angle from a Widow could be super powerful and that's when you need to whip out the other aspect of Lucio. Identifying which one to whip out can be the way that you get more consistent value on Lucio and become a much better Lucio player overall. Now moving on to character number five on our list, we have Roadhog. And the biggest tip I have for you on Roadhog is Roadhog should engage in waves based on cooldowns and disengage with no successful hook hits. This is where you peek at a natural cover, you try to confirm a kill, you use your breather to get out of danger as well as moving your physical body to a safe positioning, and then you don't re-engage until both your breather cooldown and your hook cooldown are back online. Ideally, what you want is you want a really tiny window for Roadhog to get punished, and if you keep track of specific things like nades, sleep dart, and other CC that could shut you down, you can make the really small window of time extremely impactful for Hog, fish for a kill, and if it doesn't work out, just reset, go in cycles, and try to find value and picks in cycles with Roadhog. Now moving on to character number six, it's Zen. Now, Volley does more overall burst, but less overall DPS. So you can set up with Volley for trying to trap enemies that are chasing you or just in the pre-fight trying to get a pick. But in general, when you're just trying to fight in the mid-fight, you should just be using your regular primary fire. Also, as another bonus tip, keep in mind the trance travel time. I can't tell you how many Zens will see allies low, trance, and won't keep in mind that they're not going to get there in time to actually keep their allies up. And also, the second point is a lot of Zens don't consider repositioning themselves a lot of times enemies are going to be looking to punish you right when you get out of trance so something that you should do in the last couple seconds of transcendence immortality plus his increased movement ability you should really be trying to position yourself to strong positioning where it's harder for enemies to punish you 
Now moving on to character number seven on our list, we have Zarya. So something about Zarya's alternate fire is it uses 20 ammo, but it will still fire even if you only have one ammo left. So often what you should be trying to do is just doing regular primary fire damage, but at the very last second, always incorporate an alternate fire because it does a little bit more burst damage at the end of the ammo count. If you're at 100 energy, a perfect direct alternate fire plus melee does 124 damage, which can burst down DPS supports really rapidly. It's one of the best ways to improve your lethality on Zara if you master this tip. Now, as an additional tip on Zara, this is the one tip that until I got, I was really bad on Zara, but once I learned this tip, it helped me improve immensely, is that you really need to engage in waves. So I talked about Roadhog engaging with cooldowns, but Zara is a little bit different. Zara wants to move in and out of combat based on her bubble usage, pushing it aggressively when she has bubbles and playing in the back line just doing spam damage with her team until she has bubbles online this cycle of zara can allow you to push in and not get punished use your bubbles to amplify your impact backing up when you're vulnerable and just repeating the cycle over and over again now moving on to character number eight on our list we have baptiste now with baptiste you need perfect timing to maximize baptiste's most powerful ability immortality field behind natural cover makes it hard for enemies to focus it down and right as the enemy is pushing in or over committing to kill your team the enemy is trying to make a play or use an ability and they're trying to get picks out of it but if they overextend into you and you use immortality field last moment you could get more potential value out of immortality field baiting enemies in keeping your team alive and allowing you to perhaps turn the tables now we're moving on to character number nine we have sigma now Sigma needs to use his shield more like an ability and not a shield like Ryan and Orisa. This is the biggest mistake I see most Sigmas is they'll use their shield on the front line and they'll treat Sigma almost like he's a main tank when in reality he almost fills the off tank role more than main tank. Sigma's shield should be used to block giant amounts of spam damage or powerful abilities such as hook, nade, things of that nature. Natural cover is Sigma's true base of operations so make sure that if you're playing Sigma you always play around natural cover so that you can really keep your shield health high so that you have it when you need it now in this video i'm only giving you surface level tips about each character but if you want in-depth guides over any character on the list definitely do yourself a favor and go check out gameloop.com now moving on to the 10th character on our list we have mercy now the biggest thing that's holding mercy's back in general that i see from the majority of mercies particularly at the lower ranks is mercies really don't pocket enough now i know that there is like a negative term associated with pocketing like oh you're just pocketing that guy why do you keep pocketing the mccree the true value that mercy brings is her utility the fact that she can can really pocket a dps make him exponentially harder to deal with think about something like a mccree or hanzo a diva can fly in his face to get him off the high ground again you can dive him there's all these different things that can happen to that mccree or hanzo on the high ground that can move him away from his effective positioning and can prevent him from getting the impact but if there's a mercy damage boosting him and healing him on the high ground he could hold his ground a far mercy could try to contest him a diva can try to contest him and these characters alone cannot deal with a pocketed dps on the high ground this is why why mercy is so powerful and this is the biggest tip i would give to you don't be afraid to damage boost much more and don't be afraid to pocket mercy is not a tank healer she should not be the primary source of healing for both of your tanks on the front line if she is pocketing a dps that is where she's at her best and that's where you have the most value on mercy now moving on to character number 11, we have Hammond. Now with Hammond right off the bat, if you're picking him up, you want to learn the general mechanics about how to slam off edges or short high grounds. You can peek over little high ground dips and still slam on the ground that you were initially on. And that's really powerful for Hammond in particular. Also, you'll up your damage per second and your burst potential if you learn how to really utilize this hit scan weapon. It's really easy to shoot people when they're in the arc after you slam them. So that's one of your best ways to burst down supports and things like that. And then secondly, as a bonus tip, you need to determine whether to slam based on a number of factors if the enemy has a lot of different cc's or something like a may slow sometimes it's a lot better to just swing through the enemy build up your shield health and don't slam unless you know you can live and evaluating that is the difference between a good and bad ham and each and every time before you slam think about just what can punish you then moving on to character number 12 we have brig now, firstly, you need to just use natural cover, just like with the Sigma example. A lot of the lower rank players right now think that Brig is a really poor hero, even though Brig has played all the way up to the high ranks and has an incredibly high win rate. The problem with Brig now, as opposed to how she used to be, is her shield is really just made to block big, powerful cooldowns or burst damage. You don't want to be using her shield to face tank damage. You really want to be using natural cover for the majority of the time, just like with the Sigma example. Now, the next thing that you need to do on Brig is you need to get your Inspire percentage up. 
Higher inspire percentage means better effectiveness at healing your team, which means more sustain and it's extremely good. Hitting your primary fire or your whip shot every four seconds will reactivate inspire. So try to do that each and every time. Keep that inspire percentage up and keep your sustain and your effectiveness up as well. Now moving on to character number 13, we have Winston. Now Winston, what you need to do a lot is soft engage often. Sometimes you don't need a full dive on the enemy. You want to dive slightly away from them. Use your bubble and just your primary fire to do a little bit of poke damage. When they commit to you, you disengage. The idea behind this is you're not diving directly into the enemy, so you can't get burst down, but you're still building ultimate charge, trying to find opportunity, putting pressure on the enemy, creating some space. Now the second thing that you need to do is try to close the gap without using leap on a lot of characters so that you can use your leap to chase or disengage with ease think about something like a genji if you manage to get all the way up to a genji without using your jump and then the genji dashes away from you you can use your jump to chase him confirming that kill and then my last tip for winston that i have really quickly is just practice your prime rage mechanics I mean, go into a training room, set one up where you just have permanent primal rage, practice how you move with Winston's primal rage, because juggling and booping people off the map can be one of the ways to have insane carry potential on Winston and really unlock that to allow you to win more games. Now moving on to the last character on our list, character number 14, we have Mora. Now, in general with Mora, a general tip that I have for you is don't let her orbs get reflected or eaten by D.Va. You don't want to let Genji reflect them, because that could be a way that he gets insane burst damage and more ultimate. And you don't want D.Va to eat them, because that really just neutralizes a lot of the value that you bring in the mid fight for your team. The second tip that you need to know is most of the time in a 1v1, you really don't want to use your damage orb that much. It's almost always better to use your heal orb instead and just duel normally. The thing about Mora that's really powerful in a 1v1 is you can really move sporadically but still do damage. You can be crouched, spamming left and right, going freaking nuts, and be because of the tracking weapon of your alternate fire, you will be doing all the damage to the enemy, and if you combine moving sporadically with a heal orb on yourself, unless the enemy has some form of CC or a burst shot like a headshot from Hanzo, it's going to be so difficult to win that matchup. I beat a lot of different Moras as something like Genji or Tracer when they use damage orb on me and I dodge it or bait it out and then I can go on the Mora and try to confirm a kill on her burst her down but if she heal orbs herself just uses her insane movement makes it really hard for me to burst her down and she's doing damage to me it's almost impossible for me to win that matchup and I have to usually disengage so that's a big tip for more in general really take advantage of the fact that you don't need that much mechanical skill and really abuse movement in this process now like I said before all these tips are surface level but if you really want to learn more about each individual character definitely come check out gameleap.com we have in-depth Grandmaster VOD reviews that can put you from the POV of any character on the list so that you can really learn how to think like a Grandmaster so that you could start performing and hard carrying your team just like a Grandmaster would. You don't even have to take my word for it. GameLeap.com offers a 10-day money-back guarantee, so come check us out risk-free in the links here. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I love making these videos, so if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I'll hop right on it. That's all we have for now. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time.